Super Bowl is designated a SEER Level 1 national security event by the Department of Homeland Security. And with that warning, Super Bowl swings into action every year under the watchful eye of what seems like more security personnel than guard the president on a summit meeting with his counterpart in Moscow. The New England Patriots felt it on Monday morning as they prepared to leave their base in downtown Atlanta at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. A fleet of five buses, four Georgia State Trooper cars, plain clothes, outboard riders and a band of brothers in battle fatigues carrying some serious hardware took up their positions on John Portman Boulevard just after 11 a.m. It took them an hour to get everyone on the same page. Buses screamed and sniffed out by well-trained dogs, soldiers positioned at 30-yard intervals on both sides of the street. There were enough guns and extra ammunition clips in full view to start a small war. One way or another these football players were getting to work safely. The Super Bowl's security detail has been an ever-increasing one since January 1991 when a wall was hurriedly built around Tampa Stadium to prevent any threat of a suicide car bomb being driven into the stadium. American soldiers were fighting in the Middle East at the time in the first Gulf War. Eleven years later, four months in the wake of the terrorist attack on New York's Twin Towers, the Superdome in New Orleans became the first Super Bowl site to experience what is now an annual lockdown of the host venue. A rigid fence was erected around the entire building on Thursday evening, 72 hours before kickoff, to stop anyone getting near the place. Such was the heightened sense of America's own vulnerability to surprise strikes that a gunboat was positioned a couple of miles away in the Mississippi River for defense against air attack. The intrusive and invasive nature of security these days wherever athletes, politicians, actors and musicians are found, makes being around these people seem like life is a never-ending stroll through an international airport. For fans and media in Atlanta this week, that entails bags being searched, pockets being emptied and bodies being scanned dozens of times each. For the players it means the goldfish bowl existence becomes ever more intense. They can't even go out to a practice session without an hour's warning, armed police, sniffer dogs and soldiers on the streets. Thank goodness there is a game at the end of all this.